Facing continued fallout, Russia will no longer host a major soccer match. The UEFA is relocating its Champions League final to Paris instead of St. Petersburg. The organization has strongly condemned Moscow's invasion of Ukraine. James Benz joins us now to break down the latest from the world of football. Uh, James, how significant is this announcement from UEFA? It's a very significant move, both in terms of the scale of the game, for, for viewers that may not be too familiar with with soccer. This is the, the biggest club match of the year. It's comparable to the, the Super Bowl, crowning the best soccer team in Europe and, and therefore arguably the world. Uh, but it's also very significant for, for Vladimir Putin and, and how he projects Russia throughout the world. You know, we've seen through the 2018 World Cup, through the Winter Olympics, the sport's a really big deal and the, the Russia Vladimir Putin would want you to think about is the one that hosted the 2018 World Cup to, to supreme success, not, you know, the one that is conducting the atrocities it is currently in Ukraine. So this is a significant soft power weapon for, uh, for Vladimir Putin, involvement in, in soccer. And of course, you know, this is the, the biggest sport in Europe, the biggest, one of the biggest sporting events. So a big blow to, to Russia to, to lose this game, absolutely. And then on top of that, there are several teams, including Poland and Sweden, who say they will not play the Russian team in the World Cup qualifying matches. I thought that was, and they were like, we won't play them in Russia and we won't play them anywhere else. We won't play them if, they're, if they've got a different banner. Because, you know, in the Olympics, they didn't have the Russian flag, but they said, right. we will not play them, Which period. they're trying to do here. Right. And I thought to myself, you know, I don't know how it all works, but I wouldn't be surprised if there's sort of pay cut that they have to take for that. They probably get paid for each one of these qualifying mm. rounds. And so they're sort of taking it, right? So I want to ask you, what actions has FIFA taken against the Russian team? So you outlined many of them there. Uh, the Russian team would not be able to play under the badge uh, Russia, and they would not be able to play at their home World Cup qualifiers in a hugely significant match for both Poland and Russia, a World Cup qualifier that, that if they lose, they, they couldn't go to the World Cup. Right now, that's the first step that FIFA is taking. As, as you can see from the tweet on screen, it, it's not enough for Poland. And just in the last few minutes, the International Olympic Committee have said that they will recommend that no Russian or Belarusian athletes are able to participate. That's a big step. And I'm expecting that in the next few hours or the next few days, FIFA will effectively kick Russia out of the World Cup, which is due to take place in Qatar at the end of the year. We're also expecting similar action from UEFA, which is European soccer's governing body, that they will say that the Russian women's team can't compete in the European Championships, which is in England in a few months' time. They've, they've tried to delay this a little bit, but the move just taken by the IOC, I think, will, will speed up the process, and we should have news very soon on that. Yeah, um, and so let me ask you about the owner of Chelsea Football Club giving uh, over, quote, stewardship and care of the team following calls uh, for UK action against Russian oligarchs, not just the, uh, the UK, but all of the NATO allies have uh, put into place these sanctions against some of these Russian oligarchs. What are you hearing about Abramovich? So, yes, Roman Abramovich announced on, on Saturday, the day before a major cup final for Chelsea, that he was handing over stewardship of Chelsea, one of the biggest clubs in England, uh, to uh, the board of trustees of the club's charitable foundation. It, it's a bit complicated, and I think the one thing we should really emphasise is that Roman Abramovich is still the owner. He's still uh, owed $2 billion as well by Chelsea Football Club because of all the money he's put in over nearly 20 years. This is almost a preemptive move uh, against any potential sanctions that the United Kingdom government might place on him because it has been suggested that they could go as far as seizing Abramovich's assets, which includes a, a $150 million home in, in Knightsbridge and, and also Chelsea, which is a emotionally a very significant thing for Abramovich, a, a club he's owned for 20 years and enjoyed a lot of success with. But wait, James, what he's sorry, trying let me, to do is... James, let me just ask you are, you, are you suggesting that when you say seize assets, they could not just the home, but they could also seize the club? Theoretically, it has been suggested. I, don't, I think, you know, when I talk to, to lawyers that understand this far better than me, a, a sports journalist, it seems more likely that Abramovich's assets would be frozen rather than directly seized. But what Abramovich is doing with this stewardship, which isn't really a term with any legal meaning, is he's just trying to put a little bit of distance between the club uh, and, and himself, should any sanctions take place. It's, it's notable, though, that today he is saying through his spokespeople that he is doing what he can to help broker peace in Ukraine uh, with the talks that you were discussing earlier. I think you see this as maybe an example of some of the richest oligarchs in Russia sort of trying to make clear without publicly condemning Putin that there is distance between them. So 
really fascinating how this is being played out on the sporting world. Yeah, it certainly is. Uh, James, Benj, thank you so much.